This is Brent of the Brookbush Institute, and in this video, we're going to go over the navicular drop test. I'm going to have my friend Yvette come out, and she's going to help me demonstrate this fairly simple test that has a fairly important place within our movement assessment programs at the Brookbush Institute. Now, the navicular drop test is a fairly easy test to do. We're literally measuring the height of the navicular tubercle from the ground, right? So I'm going to use a pen here and I'm going to find her navicular tubercle, which I do by, you know, falling off her medial malleoli, just inferior and then going anterior. And sure enough, there's a, there's a pretty nice little bump there. And I'm just going to put a little dot. And you don't have to put that dot. It just saves you some time from having to palpate the navicular tubercle every time. If you're really good at palpating the navicular tubercle, you can skip the pen mark. Now I'm going to take my ruler here and it helps to have a ruler with a flat bottom, guys. A curved bottom ruler, kind of like you can move it around this way and that's going to affect your measurement. You want something that has a flat bottom so you can get the ruler perpendicular to the surface you're on. I'm going to go ahead and just measure how many centimeters her navicular tubercle is from the ground. We got 3.5 centimeters. All right, so I'd take note 3.5 centimeters. If I wanted to, I could even take this measurement at the bottom of her squat. So let's go prisoner squat status since we're not assessing your upper body. Go all the way to the bottom. Hold that real quick for me. Good. And at the bottom, she's at 3.2 centimeters. Okay, great. So I got 3.2 centimeters at the bottom, 3.5 centimeters at the top. And some of you guys are thinking, Great Brent, what the heck do I do with that information? And that is a great question and the most important question. I don't use the navicular drop test like a special test. I don't think a two centimeter navicular drop means that somebody has, you know, clinical pes planus or clinical flat feet. I'm not quite using it that way. I'm using the navicular drop test the way you'd use gaudiometry. That is, goniometry is a continuous interval measure that we can use to mark progress in mobility. So if I have somebody doing an overhead squat assessment, for example, and they had knees bow in, I might do hip internal and external rotation. And despite the fact that the overhead squat assessment is binary, that is, if somebody goes from knees bow in to knees bow in but better, it's still a yes. Right? And it stays a yes until they don't have knees bow in anymore. You can use goniometry in that case to kind of see how your mobility improved degree by degree. The big problem we've had in the past is that with the overhead squat assessment, there's really, there was really no continuous interval measure or reliable continuous interval measure to keep progress of how somebody's getting better at feet flatten enter the navicular drop test. Now, the one big inconvenience of the navicular drop test, guys, is you do have to get your eyes level with your measuring device, which means if you don't have somebody healthy and strong like a vet that you can throw up on a three-foot box and have them do it so that you don't have to bend down so far, you are kind of getting on the floor. But for those of you who are really trying to correct somebody with feet flatten, I think it's well worth it, right? If I can go, okay, go ahead and squat again, Right, measure, all right, that's 3.1 centimeters. Okay, so now I go in and I do in all, my, all my interventions, I do some mobility techniques, and then maybe I follow up with tibialis posterior, tibialis anterior activation, reactive activation for tibialis posterior, tibialis anterior. Maybe I do some stability integration with like some single leg reach. I can then go, okay, let's try again, squat. And even if she still has feet flattened, this is the important point, even if she still has feet flattened, but let's say I went from 3.1 to 3.6, I know I just made improvement. And that's where this becomes a powerful tool. While you're trying to get somebody back to optimal, you have a way to show the marked improvement you've been making. The other problem we have with this test, in all honesty, guys, is we don't have enough normative data. So can I tell you for sure that a vet needs to be at four centimeters? No, I, I honestly don't know where a vet should be exactly. 
Um, I can tell you I'm taller than a vet is, right? So I probably, maybe I'm going to be at 4.5 or 5 centimeters from the floor to my navicular tubercle. I would imagine a vet, since she actually doesn't have feet flattened that bad, uh, almost, she has like almost no feet flattened on her overhead squat assessment. Maybe four would be the most I would expect out of this test. You guys are going to have to use a little bit of your professional experience on that side of things. But try entering this into your assessments just so you have a reliable continuous interval measure. Stay tuned for your close-up recap. All right, for our close-up recap, show you guys where that navicular tubercle is. Not a, not a hard landmark to find. You're going to find the bottom of the medial malleolus drop off inferiorly to just above this, the sole of the foot, and then move anterior. And you guys will feel a, a good little kind of pointy bump right about here. I'm going to go ahead and mark that off with a pen just so I don't have to keep doing it. That way as I'm continuing to add various interventions and try different techniques, I can keep coming back to this mark, keep reassessing to see if I'm getting improvement. Once I have that mark there, I'm going to go ahead and take my flat bottomed ruler, put it right up against her foot, and you guys can see that's right about 3.5 centimeters. Now, I could test her again in a deep squat. I could test her again in a lunge if that's what I'm seeing, feet flatten. All I want to do is make sure that I'm using the same test over and over again, that I'm going back to the same point on her navicular tubercle over and over again, and once again that I'm trying to measure this so that I have some sort of continuous interval measure to measure progress until I get this sign feet flatten to disappear completely. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments box below.